clearly we focus upon performance when it comes to hash rate output as well as energy efficiency from a juice potato hash point of view. All right, welcome back. Our first guest is Sanjay Gupta from Oradyne. And thank you, Sanjay, for, for joining us today. Uh, first, how are you doing today? What's great about your week? No, sure. First of all, thanks, John, for having me on. Uh, it's another you know ongoing, exciting time. We had a great uh, conference at Bitcoin Vegas last week. And we're having some great follow-ups with the customers and business partners following that. So all in all, it's uh, it's been uh, a long week, but it's been a good week as follow-ups from the conference continue to happen. That's fantastic. So what is Oradine's mission and how is it funded? Yeah, uh, John, so let me give a little bit of, of context for you and your viewers about Oradine. You know, we are a high tech uh, startup company based in Silicon Valley, California. We were founded around three years ago and our intent was to really follow and provide disruptive technology solutions that meet the needs of the market in two major areas. So our first major area of focus, which is the target of this discussion, is around blockchain. And within blockchain, we're focused specifically on Bitcoin. We have another focus area, which is around AI infrastructure that we're also focused on, and it's AI networking and really high-speed networking on that which is separate to this. And in the three years that we've been in existence, we, we design our own semiconductor chips or ASICs. We design the full system around those semiconductor chips. We design the software and we bring it to market for, for top miners, uh, Bitcoin miners all around the world, right? So that's our key area of focus. You've got some great team, great set of investors. But we said we're a high technology company based in the Bay Area in, uh, in California. What are some of the new developments in mining technology that Oradyne is, is doing right now? Sure. So, John, we, we actually spent a lot of time. I personally visited a number of Bitcoin mining data centers, talked to a lot of customers as we are designing our solutions. And we brought a number of innovative aspects of that into our product range. So, you know, on the clearly we focus upon performance when it comes to hash rate output as well as energy efficiency from a juice potato hash point of view. So that, of course, we are very, very acutely focused upon. But in addition to that, there are probably like three major themes or areas that I can outline some, some innovation that we've been doing. One is the area around energy and the overall electrical grid and ecosystem. So as I'm sure you, a lot of your viewers are well aware, you know, there's Bitcoin mining consumes a significant amount of energy, but at the same time, it can be a force for good because it allows the balancing of the grid from a supply and demand perspective. But for that, it requires specific technology. So we have a technology called Energy Tune, where you can adjust the output of the miner in terms of data hash per second or wattage. And for the entire fleet up or down within seconds, and you don't require any, any reboots. So it really allows for smooth demand and supply balancing, demand response and balancing the grid. So that's been one innovation that we brought to market which has been very well received. Another is in terms of wide operating range, right? So our machines, air-cooled machines, they can operate right up to 50 degrees Celsius, 120 to Fahrenheit, very hot conditions. Places all across the US where it gets very hot, like in the summers or very cold, minus 20 degrees Celsius. If you have these miners placed in renewable energy sources area, where again, they're very harsh conditions to work. So that's the second innovation. Third is around the uptime and resilience. We have a technology called smart hashing, where even if multiple chips fail on the board, the board keeps hashing, the system keeps hashing, hashing. So there's the, and these are just, I'm giving a few samples of innovation that we actually brought to market to ensure that Bitcoin mining is responsible. It's scalable and sustainable. And it also provides the best total cost of ownership to, uh, to Bitcoin miners. So I want to ask a little bit of a tough question. How, is, how are you different in your maybe your sales strategy or your ASICs than the, there's the, the two 
companies that really dominate the market, Bitmain and, and MicroBT. So what I do love about your company is that you are the, the, the epitome of decentralization because we are taking, you know, lessening the, the centralization of ASICs in those two companies and expanding into new areas. And I hear some of your innovations, but tell me a little bit about your sales strategy. How do you compete? So one is that we are focused upon enterprise data center scale mining companies. And we focus upon ensuring that we're giving white glove treatment. We're focusing upon them jointly for innovation. We're focusing upon them jointly for total cost of ownership. So we focus upon uh, you know, significant mining companies and a select number of them that we're directly focused upon versus addressing lots and lots of retail customers in this particular space. So I think that just keeping that focus is critical. Now, uh, we talked about some of the areas around performance, as well as around innovation to improve the total cost of ownership, which is critical. The other area that we focus upon acutely is our customer support. And that is something that we actually get great feedback from our mining customers. We have a, a great customer support team. They're highly technical. They focus upon the customers, even pre-onboarding. We have a technology called zero touch provisioning where it's very easy to onboard the miners. And then we focus on any issues that the miner, we first of all, of course, design the machines that they should not have issues, but for any technical support, we actually get you know great marks. So we say we differentiate on performance in terms of uh, output and juice per terahash. We differentiate on innovation from a total cost of ownership and this demand response. And then we differentiate based upon customer support and service. And then in addition to that, there's companies that are looking for diversification, like you mentioned. Uh, the supply for a decentralized protocol like Bitcoin, it's actually very unusual and odd that the supply is so centralized and that too centralized for Chinese-based companies. Uh, we actually think that's a risk to the protocol itself, let alone for any Bitcoin mining company in the midst. So we are a US-based company. We provide a strong US technology-based alternative, uh, either as a primary or secondary or exclusive you know, provider to these top-tier Bitcoin miners. You talked a little bit earlier that you are narrowed into a niche with enterprise-level uh, Bitcoin mining companies. What is an enterprise-level? What's, what's the quantification of that? Yeah, so we, we maintain a broad, you know, so it's not a kind of a strict line in the bright line in the sand, uh, John, as you can imagine. But what we're not doing is we don't sell, for instance, our miners on on Amazon or eBay, right? Uh, or, you know, onesie twosie. Having said that, we have, we also announced that we are focused upon back the theme around democratization of Bitcoin mining, that we have opened up our ASIC semiconductor chips for sale as well to companies that are now creating different form factors around Bitcoin mining. Some of them are using it for heat reuse uh, applications, which are very innovative and interesting, or small miners that have different use cases. So we've actually opened up that uh, our ecosystem to sell that. And on the other end, we're also selling full modular solutions, which come in, for instance, one megawatt or beyond full solutions, which include our liquid or hydro cool miners, our immersion cool miners or air cooled miners that somebody can take a full megawatt system and replicate that very easily if they'd want to expand. But it is, you know, overall we're talking about typically, you know, uh, order in, in the hundreds of units, if not thousands of units for each of our customers. Can you expand a little bit more? I'm really interested in this one megawatt module that you have. What does it look like and how 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 is that different from other companies? Yeah, so uh, it's actually we, we think it's a very uh, exciting you know solution and it's almost like a turnkey plug and play solution, John, as you can imagine. So we've got these contained and we've actually deployed them in the field. So we've actually got showcases where customers can have a look at it. But it's truly a turnkey where we have got uh, take the case of, of immersion, where it's a full uh, container. Uh, it's the the tanks which have immersion fluid that is compatible, and we've tested it 
with our mining, our miners. We have miners which have got high density. Uh, we pack seven and a half thousand watts within each of our immersion miners, and it's optimized, you know, for that. So you can take a full one megawatt full module, and if you have the available power and infrastructure, you can just take it. If you have ten megawatts, you can take ten such units and rapidly deploy that. So it's a fully tested, fully optimized uh, turnkey solution, and then we do the same for hydro as well as uh, for air cool. I love it. I may have to learn more about that. But we have to go back to our regularly scheduled questions because <laughs> <laughs> this is exciting. I love this. So you didn't, you weren't here, but earlier today we did a show and the, we finished out the show talking a little bit about tariffs. Uh, we heard a lot of, there's a lot of conversation about the tariffs at, at Bitcoin uh, 2025 out in Vegas. How does Aradine address tariffs um, related to the Chinese mining hardware companies? Yeah, so a, a few different dimensions. And, you know, clearly, John, the situation is still fluid, uh, that there's ongoing evolution around the tariffs, the tariff regime and the policy. And it does have an impact on, uh, on the industry, depending upon where it finally settles or lands in. There's a few points that we think are relevant from our perspective. One is that we are a U.S. company. So our team is based here. The intellectual property is created here. Uh, our, we have contract manufacturing of the final goods, which we do in the U.S. Uh, and we also do in other parts of the, of the world outside of China. So uh, you know, depending upon the final tariff regime, you know, we can also adjust the final manufacturing. But the key thing is that we have intellectual property that is from the U.S., uh, we get our fabrication, of course, of the chips done outside of the U.S. Uh, and then the final manufacturing and assembly can be done in different parts. But even our semiconductor chips, which are on the latest cutting edge node, whenever even that fabrication is available in the U.S., it's compatible to those fabrication units that will eventually come to the U.S. as well. So we'll see where the overall end tariff situation uh, falls and uh, whether there's recognition of companies that are US-based companies with US-based intellectual property in that overall tariff regime. But in the meantime, you know, we're working very closely with our customers to ensure that, that it's very clear and we adjust you know, based upon what the current tariff situation is. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, how, how many Bitcoin uh, ASIC miners, uh, Bitcoin miners has Oridine shipped and like, how big is your customer base? I want to kind of give give our audience a, a perspective because you know in the in the small world, in the small world, you you look on the boards, the telegram boards, and it says, you know, bitmain, 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 what's what's what's, and then a couple alpha plexes on the bottom. You know, so I don't think a lot of people have a real perspective of the size of your company and the impact that you have on the market. Yeah, yeah. No, John, very much appreciate uh, that question. And we have actually, we came to market very rapidly. Normally for a company that designs semiconductor chips and full systems and software, it takes them several years to fully come to scale in the marketplace. We're a three-year-old company. We came to market very rapidly. We, you know, within a year itself, we taped out our first semiconductor chip. We built systems and shipped them. And since then, we've been scaling very rapidly. But to give a perspective, we have over 10 exahash of our miners in the field already. We've shipped you know, tens of thousands of these miners in two different customers. We've shipped to 50 plus minor customers already. So for a three-year-old company, that has been rapid growth. We don't get questions anymore around, can you scale? So you know, earlier in the early days, people would say, you know, Sanjay, you're a great company. Technology is fantastic. We love your customer obsession and focus, but it's different from making you know, 10 miners versus scaling and shipping to a thousand or thousands of miners. So nowadays we don't get any of those questions that can you scale, can you support, can you globally deliver? We get more questions around, you know, what is the next roadmap? What is the next innovation? So we've already crossed that, that bridge. 
But obviously, like, you know, these other companies you mentioned, they've been in existence for much longer than we have been. But we have been rapidly, you know, building and coming to market. So, you know, some of those metrics you can imagine are, are things which are in, and I've been in the industry for like 35 plus years, John, is actually quite unprecedented, even in my 35 years of rapid growth and bringing products to market from scratch in three years to have this level of deployment in the in markets around the world. And not, you're not only you know deploying fast and scaling quickly and making a huge impact on the, the ASIC manufacturing. Um, I, I know a lot of the executives from or Oradyne, they got together to meet and talk about uh, Bitcoin policy issues. Can you shed a little light on that and what that was about? Sure. So this is again ongoing input that the administration is looking for from a policy perspective. I think the administration has very clearly indicated that they would love an America first approach towards Bitcoin, Bitcoin mining and Bitcoin mining innovation. And we being a strong U.S. company obviously have, you know, believe we have a key role to play in that. Uh, there's inputs on two or three dimensions uh, when it comes to a policy perspective. One is that it comes in terms of, of tariffs and how that should apply to the U.S. industry or not. Uh, that's one area of policy input. There's two additional areas of policy input. You know, one is that there's existing policy which prohibits the access of sensitive semiconductor uh, technology to Chinese companies. And that applies for AI applications, defense applications, and so on, including Bitcoin mining. Right? So Bitcoin mining, a lot of people are not necessarily aware. It really utilizes the latest cutting edge technology. And this is technology, they're measured, and I don't want to get, try to get too technical on this, but they're measured in terms of the distance or the thickness of the transistors. And we are, the sensitive technologies are what is called four nanometers, three nanometers, getting to two nanometer technology. This is the same technology nodes that are used for GPUs, for AI, or telecom, or defense. And uh, there is existing policy that prohibits access of this to Chinese companies. So there's inputs that the policymaker is looking for in terms of how that is applying or should apply to Bitcoin mining for Chinese companies, right? So that's one, another area. And then there's also some question the concern where you have tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of miners, which are connected to the US electrical grid. And if you have foreign firmware running on them, then what level of security risk does this uh, indicate or you know cover for the US or not uh, in terms of uh, you know, any issues around that? because there's concerns on that in the telecom industry where you have foreign technology connected to sensitive telecom installations across the country. Uh, there is uh, at least an emerging awareness and concern around that in the case of Bitcoin miners, which are from outside of the U.S., have unknown firmware on them from outside of the U.S., and they're connected to the electrical grid. So there's inputs and discussions around that, and our our role is to provide input awareness where needed on any and all of these policy areas. This is an exciting time to be in the Bitcoin mining business. And Sanjay, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. Um, I, I appreciate the insight that you've given in, into your company and into Bitcoin mining. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks a lot, John, for having me. It's a, a pleasure and uh, it's always you know, good to connect on this.